Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to another Back in My Day. And obviously from what you can see in front of you, today we're going to talk about Magic the Gathering, the most popular of games. Well, first thing, uh, let me preface that this is going to be about my memories of the game. I, th I still think it's a fantastic game, but admittedly um, I have not played it in years. So if I don't keep up with the lingo of it, I do, or I make a mistake, I do apologize. So let's get into it anyway. So basically, um, if you saw my last um, back in my day video, uh, I told the story of how I started the geek hobby in general. And um, the next game I picked up after Warhammer 40,000 and Warhammer, the miniatures game, was basically this game here, Magic the Gathering. And I just found it as a fantastic game and I started of course with Ice Age in 1995 and maybe latest 1996 and had a great time playing then um, I was really into the game and I even managed to find this the flame but this was actually territories that m uh, me and my twin brother would play over then whoever won the Pacific um, card battle would be have certain areas taken over you know, like we had the Middle Kingdom and the North, South, East, um, East and the West. You know, look at that. Man, I used to put a lot of time into all the storylines, you know, and all that. And on top of that, um, of course, if you saw the last one, you know, this is my most prized possession. Got in the starter set um, of Ice Age. I think it was worth about, at the time, Singapore dollars, 30 bucks, which was long. <laughs> You know, for a kid who like, if uh, you like, again, you saw the last one. You know, I earned about. Uh, it was school time, so I was given allowance like one dollar a day, five days a week. So I basically had five dollars, and a blister pack would probably uh, basically I could get a blister pack once a week. So getting a card that was worth thirty bucks at the time uh, was quite a thing. So price possession again, I won't sell this for quite a bit. You know, probably if you even offer me a hundred bucks, I wouldn't sell this. And so we um, we started at Ice Age, and basically I played um, all the way till 1997 when Weatherlight came out. And that was basically the last Magic deck I basically put a lot of effort into. And after that, I basically stopped playing it. Um, this is not not the game. I think the mechanics of Magic the Gathering is fantastic. I think it's a very strategic game with just the right element of luck in there it, um, to make it so that there is an ease to the game where you can just a catch-up mechanic in a way. Um, but of course, it's, um, it's so popular now, you can make massive competitions of, uh, with, it, um, with it, and so it's very strategic. And But for me, I've always, I always had a problem. Um, admittedly that I'm poor, you know, I, I never had a ton of money and again this is about my memories of it so again my criticisms I'm giving is my personal experience of just not being able to afford the proper deck, you know, like for me my favorite deck was, um, I mean I used up, I sold, gotten rid of a lot of this uh, stuff but my favorite decks was always the, man, look at that. I remember using that all the time. The Magic Fireball decks and the White um, Plains decks, which are a lot of healing, and I love those. And I used to keep playing, but the problem is that, you know, with, when you have richer kids, to be honest, they bought more packs, they have better cards, and they actually will go to the places where they can trade cards and actually pay, like, for, you know, high school kid or secondary school kid, pay 25 bucks for a card or something like that. And, you know, I was total. Even though I started the, the Magic the Gathering League in my school, um, I got total <laughs> all the time. I I always lost. And strange to say, another strange thing that happened was that we somebody found out we were playing Magic the Gathering. Again, this was 1995 to 1997, probably 95, 96. And I remember a kid. He uh, he was a tall kid, probably the most popular kid in the class. And he came over and said, oh, you're playing Magic? Do you know though that is, um, what's that? What did he say? He said, I think his exact words were Satan's, that was Satanic. And they had the devil in it. 
and I looked at him like, you know, um, okay, I'm not going to stop playing. I didn't believe it because I was not exactly religious at the time as now. I'm not religious now either, but say la vie, I'm agnostic. So, you know, that was a strange experience with magic, but you know, at least he didn't ever take it further. So that was cool. And, well, basically over the years, I've... I always wanted to try other new ones like um, Game of Thrones and all that, but my experience with Magic was just, to be honest, I loved the game. I think the game is very easy to learn, especially the basic level, the instance go straight away and all. But it's just too much of a money grab. Grab, and we even with living card games, you know, they keep coming with packs and packs and packs and packs, and if you don't keep up, basically, you get total again. It's the same thing; you get total. So I'm always had this barrier against um, card games rather than board games because board games if I don't buy the expansion I can find someone to play with and we can we're on a fair level but if let's say with a card game if I was to play with you and I put down a let's say now if I use my Ice Age deck you know which is not tournament we'll legal but if I play my Ice Age deck my the one I showed you the Fireball deck place it down against a current deck that someone's using now I'll there's no way I'll win because I'm not kept up with the system. Whereas the board game, regardless of what it is, the base set, everybody's using the base same base set. You know, now you can argue that well, we can look for someone that. But like I said, for me, I like to get one thing and stick it. So imagine like if it was Ice Age, I'll still use my Ice Age stuff. Who it's going to be pretty hard in in the long term to imagine that you will never need to upgrade your deck. So basically, that's why I stopped. But again. Never knocking it, I love the game. Um, in fact, I sorted, ev looked through every single card in my Magic deck and looked for the most expensive cards. And again, because of how poor I was, I, I, I don't have many expensive cards. Um, in fact, my most expensive cards are probably these two. <laughs> you know, if, but if you check out, alright, would be probably not more than 5 bucks. You know, this one also dropped in price, but to me, you know, it's a it's a good memory. Um, this one especially, I wouldn't like I said, I wouldn't sell for almost anything. And you know, I mean, I just separated anything, any card. All <laughs> all these cards are really cheap if you just look at them. But these are my so-called prized magic possessions, and I just keep them around. You know, just good memories. Like they are actually worth some, like you know, like maybe they're worth a buck or something. But to me. These are my most expensive cards and you know memory good memories so you know just like show them off especially like this one i thought it was a land card you know like actually i found it was actually worth something snow covered mountains probably worth one two bucks or something like that i don't know but yeah look at that yep and Basically, um, after that I looked through and here's a little thing I made from um, magic cards that, you know, basically just leaving there and I, I, like I said, I got a bit tired of have haggling with people over the price of it and selling it and people wanted to buy whole sets of it but obviously they're looking for the expensive cards so if you they go home and they find none, they want you want a full total refund, blah blah blah. So in the end I decided just to keep what I had and make some arts and crafts and that is what I'm going to show you here. This is actually. Let me try to move this back. A poster. Let's see, it opens up. It folds, and actually, I use it to protect, like like a curtain, to protect my stuff from the sunlight. You know, because many just want to lose their color. You know, and I pasted basically all the land cards. As you can see, I turn open. Alright, this is the poster here, and I use PVA glue, uh, white glue, and I put the land cards as a base. Then after you stick all the picture cards on top, and then you get a very solid piece, you know, a good curtain piece. And if the cards fade, it doesn't matter because you <laughs> got so many. And I actually made stories of it, like, um, okay, again, I can't get a full picture, but basically each of the pages of the cards have a story I can tell, you know, like the back line they have the wards in the corners to protect the inner ki the inner ward they're casting a spell and these are the the monsters they use to protect it the, the sides 
ooh, ooh, and one of my favorite cards, um, Chapter. Yeah. Remember that little text. Yeah, that's a good thing about magic cards too. They got that text that gives it so much flavor. You know, I actually used to remember this um, poem all the time. Chapter, chapter at the door. Chapter, chapter at the door. Run away quick or you'll run no more. My God, these are great. Again, just fantastic memories. Um, um, I'm I probably would never get back into magic, but again, I just have to say, fantastic game. And just looking through, wanted to share that with you. Till next word.